Hello, everybody. It's April 3rd. This is the first lesson of the new unit uh, trigonometry. Today's lesson, I can find the ratios of the six trigonometric functions using Sokotoa and the reciprocal functions. Last year, you learned how to do Sokotoa. Today, we're going to kind of review that and build upon it. So our first example, we're going to do um, not in your packet. It's just a random example that we're going to take a look at now. Let's go A, B, C. Let's go three, four, five. And let's find sine of A, cosine of A, tangent of A. So so Katoa is an acronym that houses three formulas for us. So Katoa. Sine theta equals O over H. Cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Oh, that's what So Katoa means. Yep, that's what So Katoa means. It's just three formulas contained within it. So my first step is to label my A, my O, and my H. So if I'm dealing with sine A, the hypotenuse is always, let's go a different color. The hypotenuse is always my long slanted side. The angle always connects my H to my A, and the side opposite the angle is my O. So, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over hypotenuse is 4 over 5. Adjacent over hypotenuse is 3 over 5. And opposite over adjacent is 4 over 3. That's it. You did a lot of it last year. Um, it's pretty straightforward as long as you know how to do it. Now we're going to introduce the three reciprocal functions. And the three reciprocal functions are cosecant, which is CSC for short, secant, which is SEC for short, and cotan, which is COT for short. Now, the way I listed them is the way in which the pairs are. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. The reciprocal of tan is cotan. And reciprocal means flip it. So if sine is O over H, the reciprocal of that is H over O. Basically, I'm just flipping this fraction. 5 over 4. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. So the reciprocal of A over H is H over A. The reciprocal of 3 over 5 is 5 over 3. Cotan is the reciprocal of tan. The reciprocal of O over A is A over O. The reciprocal of 4 over 3 is 3 over 4. And those are your answers. So you need to know which ones go with which. So to help you remember that, S goes with C and C goes with S. It's always the opposite. The S of sine goes with the C of cosecant. The C of cosine goes with the S of secant, and the tan and the cotan are pretty self-explanatory. They both have a tan in it. So to help you remember, the S goes with the C, the C goes with the S. It's always the opposite to determine what the reciprocal functions are. We're going to use Sokotoa to come up with these, and once I have those to find the reciprocal functions, I'm literally just finding the reciprocal. I'm just flipping them. Um... All right, let's let's do one more, and then um, we'll move on to the actual worksheet. Let's go uh, x, y, z, five, twelve, thirteen. Let's deal with x. I want sine x, 
cosine x tan x. I know based on Sokotoa, sine is O over H, cosine is A over H, tangent is O over A. Label your A, your O, and your H. H is always the long slanted side. A is the side that's connected to the H, and that's your O. So O over H, 5 over 13, A over H, 12 over 13, O over A, 5 over 12. Now the reciprocal functions, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, the reciprocal of tan is cotan. I'm not going to write H over O, H over A, A over O, I should do that in the first example, but basically I'm just going to take the reciprocal of each. The reciprocal of 5 over 13, 13 over 5. The reciprocal of 12 over 13, 13 over 12. The reciprocal of 5 over 12, 12 over 5. That's it. Now, one thing I want to talk about before we get into the actual lesson is something that we call Pythagorean triples. You don't need to know the Pythagorean triples, but if you do know them, it makes your life a lot faster and easier. So, Pythagorean triples are sets of integers that can be the sides of a right triangle. They're essentially sides that fit into Pythagorean theorem. So, I want you to memorize your Pythagorean triples. 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13. Those are the two main ones to know. There's also 7, 24, 20, oops, 20 meter. There's also 7, 24, 25. And there's 8, 15, 17. You really want to have these memorized. If you have them memorized, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Also understand that any multiple of these will also be a Pythagorean triple. So, for example, if I multiply 3, 4, 5 by 2, I get 6, 8, 10. I can do that by 2. I can do it by 3. I can multiply them by anything. The point is that um, any multiple of the Pythagorean triples are also Pythagorean triples. How are Pythagorean triples useful? Well, I'll show you. Let's say I have a right triangle, and I know that this is 3 and this is 4. So I recognize that these two numbers are two numbers of a triple, so if the two legs are 3 and 4, then I know automatically the third side must be 5. If I have a right triangle, and I know that this is 5 and this is 13, well, I recognize this as a 5, 12, 13 triangle, therefore, the other leg must be 12. Your other option would be to do Pythagorean theorem. So if I didn't know that 5, 12, 13 was a Pythagorean triple, what I would have had to do is done 5 squared plus x squared equals 13 squared, 25 plus x squared equals 169 minus 25 minus 25 x squared equals 144 x equals 12. So you can go that route and there will be examples where you have to do Pythagorean theorem but if you know your Pythagorean triples it's just going to make your life a little bit easier. All right we did a lot of talking let's do some doing. Just a couple new things that we're going to see in the first example after that, they're going to all be the same. So, it's telling you that cosine of theta equals 12 over 13. And theta is in quadrant 1. So, first off, I'm going to draw a grid. Now, to draw my triangle, because it says that theta is in quadrant 1, and in this particular worksheet, it's going to always be in quadrant 1. There will be a later worksheet where it's not in quadrant 1. I'm going to go from the origin. I'm going to draw a line into the first quadrant. I'm going to go down to the x-axis. This is my angle. So again, if it's in quadrant one, for all these, I'm going to draw a line 
from the origin into quadrant one. I draw my triangle down to the x-axis. That's my angle. So if cosine is 12 over 13, then my adjacent is 12 and my hypotenuse is 13. Now, is this a Pythagorean triple? Yes, this is a 5, 12, 13, which we talked about here. So I can just fill in the 5. Otherwise, I could have done x squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. x squared plus 144 equals 169. x squared equals 25, x is 5. So again, it's faster to know your Pythagorean triples, but you can still do Pythagorean theorem, and we will see examples where you're going to have to do Pythagorean theorem. So now that I have this, again, I can label my a, my o, and my h that make, make things a little bit easier. h, a, o. Cosine is a over h. Sine is o over h. Tan is O over A. That's all based on so toa. A over H is 12 over 13. O over H is 5 over 13. Tangent is O over A, 5 over 12. Now the reciprocal functions are just the reciprocal of each of those. The reciprocal of cosecant is secant. I'm sorry, the reciprocal of cosine is secant. So I'm just going to do the reciprocal of whatever cosine is. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so I'm just doing the reciprocal of sine. And cotan is the reciprocal of tan, so I'm just doing the reciprocal of tan, and that's it. Number two. quadrant one. So again, to make my triangle, I go from the origin, I draw a line into quadrant one, I go down to my x-axis, that's my angle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the opposite is three, the hypotenuse is five. Is this a triple? Yes, it's a three, four, five, because I know my Pythagorean triples. So I can just fill in the four. The other option would be to do the Pythagorean theorem. I'm not going to do that now. I know to do a trig ratio, I use so ka, toa. Cosine is A over H. Sine is O over H. Tangent is O over A. I can fill in my A, my O, and my H. H, the angle connects my H to my A. That's my O. So A over H is 4 over 5. O over H is 3 over 5, O over A, 3 over 4. Now my reciprocal functions are the reciprocals. Again, S goes with C, C goes with S. I lined them up correctly for you. C goes with S, S goes with C. The reciprocal of cosine is secant, so the reciprocal of 4 over 5 is 5 over 4. The reciprocal of 3 over 5 is 5 over 3. The reciprocal of 3 over 4 is 4 over 3. And that's it. I'm done. I'm just going to do one more example for you, and then you'll have the rest to do for classwork slash homework, and you'll have a short quiz on this. Um, four. It's in quadrant one. O over H. My opposite is 5. My hypotenuse is 6. Is this a Pythagorean triple? Is there a Pythagorean triple with 5 and 6? No. So if it's not a Pythagorean triple, I'm going to have to do Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to do x squared plus 5 squared equals 6 squared in Pythagorean theorem. C is always the hypotenuse. x squared plus 25 equals 36. Do the algebra. 
x squared equals 11 square root. Now I can't take the square root of 11, so I'm going to leave it as radical 11. H A O. Cosine is A over H. Sine is O over H. Tangent is O over A. Again, that's all based off of so the teller. A over H, radical 11 over 6. O over H. 5 over 6, O over A, 5 over rad 11. Then the reciprocal functions are just the reciprocal of those. 6 over rad 11 for secant, cosecant 6 over 5, cotan, and like my 5. Cotan, the reciprocal of radical, the reciprocal of 5 over radical 11 is radical 11 over 5. That's it. It's pretty straightforward. Your classwork slash homework. Which will be due Sunday night. Is just to finish... reciprocal trig ratios. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.